Sauteing Off the Pounds. I'm Chef D. And I'm Dr. K. And we're back in the pantry today. Today, um, I love to go shopping in Asian markets. Um, in Bloomington, where I'm from, we've got several as well as international markets. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's kind of like taking a little journey around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know if you like to do that. A little bit. <laughs> a little I don't bit. have as much opportunity as you do, but uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's always unique. You find different stuff and different people, so it's always nice. Get yeah, a, yeah. A you blend. definitely get to, to rub shoulders with people you yeah. may not normally see. Mm -hmm. um, one, a lot of the things that I have here today are seaweeds, and they've said that we should have five, about 5% five of our diet should be sea vegetables. So we have kelp, we have wakame, um, we have a different... Uh, salad that has about five different kinds let's see two two three four six different kinds of seaweed in it um, and then we have actually different kinds, different kinds of mushrooms here but the sea vegetables have a lot of iodine in them um, they also are for me they seem to help with my digestion I'm not sure if there's the other things that that are valuable from from the sea vegetables they also have less impact on on the world and um, you know a lot of them are naturally grown and organically harvested um, so really try to work some of these vegetables into your diet. The kelp is great to put in, in stews. Um, you think of nori paper, which is the yeah. stuff that wraps around mm -hmm. sushi. Um, that's great to eat with sushi, but also you can take scissors and um, slice it up and sprinkle it over top of a okay. salad, which is really, really good. And now they also have a lot of those little seaweed uh, papers that are seasoned. So they may be seasoned with some uh, spice or with sesame oil or hot peppers. And then you can use those just to kind of pick up food with. Okay. Um, so you, you get these little squares, you'll see them. They're really mm -hmm. inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So go to the Asian markets, international markets, buy those. And then if you have a bowl of grains, you can use those actually to pick up the grains and eat them with. I love that. Um, and and then dishes. salads. No utensils. <laughs> yes, there you go. Mushrooms are another thing that are very exciting when you go to Asian markets. I've got a few varieties here. Um, we've got the black fungus, which is also called cloud ears. And these are amazing. They look like little dried pieces of leather. Mm -hmm. But when you soak them in warm water, they puff up mm -hmm. and they make these, uh, these great mushrooms. Um, you want to get kind of cut off the woody part. There's a little bit of it that will still be kind of tough. And then just cut them into little thin ribbons. You can use those in all kinds of stir fries. Um, shiitakes, I actually grow shiitakes, oh. um, but these are dried shiitakes, and I like these kind. Um, they're big pieces, and these are great to put in broths, like clear broths, chicken soup, that kind of stuff where you really want to see a big, pretty mushroom. And um, make sure when you do soak the mushroom, especially the shiitakes, if you get dried morels, dried porcinis, mm -hmm. don't just throw away that water. Save the liquid that you soak them in mm -hmm. and use that in your stocks and soups okay. and, and everything. So whenever you're soaking mushrooms, you don't want to put too much water on them. You want to have just enough to cover them. Um, and then when you squeeze it out, save the water and pour the water out of the liquid. And there may be some sand on the bottom. So you don't want to just dump yeah, everything okay. in there. You want to make sure that you leave any sandy particles at the bottom of your, your soaking bowl. Okay. Um, and this is another shiitake mushroom. Um, these are the whole caps. And these are also great in stews and roasts, and they give you that earthiness. And there's a lot of um, Asian medicine that does suggest that you eat mm -hmm. a lot of different mushrooms. So if you want to learn more about uh, Eastern medicine... I know there's a tea that they make out of mushrooms, mm -hmm. and they put mushrooms and drink the tea, and I cannot remember the name, but I've had it, and it's actually really good. Mm -hmm. so. um, then also lots of different bottled ingredients. Mm -hmm. And remember, most of these contain a lot of salt. And some of them have quite a bit of sugar in them. So read the, read the labels and um, use them as condiments. Don't use them as main ingredients. And always check your food, taste it, mm -hmm. season it to taste before you add a lot of different salt, the soy sauces and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, just a little drive by the Asian market. Um, another way that you can make your pantry exciting. One last thing, if you want to pep it up a little bit, try some Szechuan peppercorns. Mm. Um, if you like Szechuan food, it's, it's uh, a little bit spicier, has a lot of chilies in it, but the Szechuan uh, peppercorn comes from the prickly ash tree, and it's actually a seed pot. It's not related to, to green pepper, black pepper, or pink peppercorns, all those are, are different. Um, and this has almost a little numbing effect. So your, your, your lips should actually tingle a little bit when you eat a dish from Szechuan using these peppercorns. So uh, spice up your life and keep sauteing off the pounds. I'm Chef D. And I'm Dr. K. 
Have a great day.